Hi everybody, welcome back. Today I'm gonna be coloring in the Inklings 2 by Tanya Bond. And this is the image I already, I'm almost done coloring it. So, but it, in this little episode today, <laughs> I'm gonna be actually just showing you guys how I color the little hummingbird. Now, if you're asking why do I have this paper over on top, it's because I actually did her skin with pan pastels and I didn't want the colors to all smear together. So this kind of helps protect the paper in a way, or the image, so the colors don't start mixing with each other. So the color pencils that I'm gonna be using is gonna be a mixture. I'm gonna be using my Holbein's and my Luminous Caran Dash color pencils and one Copic marker, and then I think two pencils of Prismacolors, and then my little brush with solvent. So let's see. Now this is inspired by the original artist. I kind of went off by the color palette that she did. So <clears throat> hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with if I could remember, spring green. And I'm just coloring roughly. I'm not being so precise. And then add some here. And then maybe some on the wing area. Like I said, I'm not being precise. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take some little bit of yellow and add them in the inner part. Now that, and this one is lemon yellow. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add turquoise blue. And I'm just gonna go around the edges And then I'm gonna add some more on the top right here in the edge. Just like that. And just add a tad bit more of that blue, overlapping that green that we had used. And then add some on the wing area. Now I'm not being so precise with it, so there's not really a method of how to color this little part of the hummingbird. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add Patlo, or I'm, I can't really see the, the words because they're so tiny. So if I can't say it, I'm just gonna leave the name on the screen, but it's blue and it's 162. So, so that blue, I'm actually going to concentrate it on the outer edges, just like that. I'm not going to add a lot of blue. Just like that. And I'll be going in with my solvent to kind of mix everything up. I'm gonna go with that green on top of that blue. To kind of mix those colors. And again, this one is spring green. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead with my um, solvent, my little brush. And the solvent that I'm using is just a baby oil. Um, you can use whatever solvent you have, but 
but I find it that um, using baby oil for me is easy. A lot of people say that they don't recommend it because in, um, your image turns yellow. Well, it hasn't happened to me and I've been coloring for a very, very long time. And, and again, this is not for the purpose of selling any portraits or anything like that. So yeah. And if you want to frame it, I would suggest that you use a different type of solvent. So in case um, with the sun, it just starts yellowing the image like that because of the sun. Okay, so <clears throat> now I'm just going to go ahead and blend those colors. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and add some black. And I'm gonna be taking my Prismacolor because I feel like my Prismacolor is better than my whole line for some reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some black here. I'm gonna bring down the black just a tad bit. I'm not adding a lot of pressure either. here and definitely up here is it I'm not adding a lot of pressure I'm definitely gonna put a lot of black here I feel like if you're a beginner, um, using a solvent will make everything just more easy to blend, especially if you're not good at blending. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and take my little brush again, swipe and clean the excess part right here, and just gently rub that in there. Just like that. Starting to come to life. Okay. So now that we've done that, we're going to move forward and start doing this part right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take lemon yellow. I'm gonna concentrate this, uh, concentrate this in the center, just like that. Maybe some put some yellow. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and take some of my um, darker yellow, which would be golden bismuth yellow. And I'm going to like slightly um, put that on top of that yellow that I had laid down first. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and take my orange. It's like start overlapping that color with the yellow. And I'm just kind of going around, just like that. And then bring that orange part right here. Like I said, there's not really a 
an exact way of how I'm just laying down the colors. I'm just laying them down. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my whole line. And this one is strawberry. Sorry for the glare of the sun. And I'm gonna start overlapping that orange with that strawberry color. Hopefully you guys are able to see this correctly. Just like that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and take, um, actually I'm gonna go and bring down that, that strawberry color just a tad bit here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my red, my scarlet, and actually concentrate that on the outer edges. Just like that. Okay. Now it might look kind of weird, but it will start coming all together. I think what gives it a pop of life is all the little highlights, all the little details that you start adding to the little bird, to the hummingbird. Now, hopefully, for some reason, I can never get the lighting correct on my videos, so I, it just never really comes up like the true colors that I'm seeing in person. <laughs> They're more vibrant. They're not like dulled down. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start blending. All those colors together. And as you can see, it just starts looking like I use markers or something, which I, I really like it when I use this method a lot. I mean, you don't need to use this method. You could just easily layer and blend the colors like that with your color pencils. But I feel like this just gives it more of a intensity because you could go on top of it and just keep layering more colors on top until you come to the um, intensity or the opaque color that you want for your coloring. There we go. So I'm going to let that like semi, you know, dry just a tad bit before I go ahead and add more yellow to make it more intense. Or I could just go ahead and add more red if I wanted to. So you know what, I'm, I'm just gonna do it for the purpose of this video. So I'm going in with strawberry again. And like I said, whenever you do go on top of that colors, the color starts intensifying even more. So I was just wondering to myself right now, how is everybody doing? And is there any other new coloring book that has come out that I should check out? And if there is, make sure you guys leave those comments down below. I, I appreciate all the emails that I always get. I really do. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add some yellow here. And then I'm gonna go again with that scarlet. The outer edges. I 
there we go so now I'm just gonna go ahead and start blending those again So now that I'm done with that part, now I'm going to go ahead and use brown ochre 50% and I'm just going to start layering that on top like that. I'm just doing strokes, I'm not being precise. I'm going to go in with raw umber and I'm going to start concentrating that in the outer edges just like that and if you have to make sure you sharpen your pencils. sepia and again I'm just going to concentrate that on the top and then on the edges and then where I want it to be a little bit more dark and I'm just doing strokes French gray to dipping up that just like that. I'm going to start concentrating this even more right here in the inner parts of the hummingbird. Like that. I'm doing strokes again, like I said. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and use my my black from Prisma and I'm actually going to start concentrating more of that black color because I feel like this one punches more of a color and I'm starting to create like a slight um, pattern not a lot like that and then I'm just gonna go back in with uh, brown ochre and add those where I want it to be semi-light.
It looks kind of weird right now, but it's okay. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is grab my little handy little brush right here. And I'm just gonna slightly blend all those together, going in one direction, not in multiple directions, but in one direction. Okay. So now I'm gonna use my Copic And I'm gonna go on the outer rims of the bird. Eyes. And I'm using, what color am I using? E18. Copper. Okay, so I'm gonna let that semi dry that part before I go in again with the same marker and add more strokes of hair. So green and it's my whole wine and I'm just gonna add the on the outer edges, just like that. Just like that, I'm not being so precise. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go in with just a slight more darker green. So it just gives it more of a pop of color on the outer edges. And this one is leaf green and it's a whole wine color. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and use uh, raw umber 50% on the outer edges of my, of the wing of the birdie. And this one is a Caran d'Ache Luminous color pencil. I've done that. I'm going to go ahead and go in with French gray. And actually this one I'm going to go ahead and do it in the outer edges as well. Just like that. But I'm making sure I'm concentrating those colors in the outer edges. That I'm not bringing it in more than I should. I'm just adding some there so it could be like a dimension there. So now I'm going to go in with my trusty little brush again. So everything just starts to look kind of blended just like that then if you feel like you lost some of that green you could just easily go ahead and add more green and I'm gonna go ahead and use the leaf green I think I'm going to go ahead and take raw umber 50% and I'm just going to go ahead and start adding this on the edges. And I'm just going to do light strokes like this. Concentrate more of that color on the inner edges. Just like that. Just 
just like that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and use um, brown ochre, 50%. I'm just gonna concentrate that on this side, so right here. And some here on the bottom. like that and then I'm gonna go ahead and take a French gray and concentrate that in the outer edges as well just like that and I'm just doing like lightly hair strokes in a way. Just like that. Don't be scared to make mistakes because from mistakes you learn. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take my trusty little brush again and slightly start blending those together. Just like that. And then after that, I'm just gonna go ahead and slightly go in with raw umber. Just add some more dip here. And the outer edges. This right here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and use my little brush again and blend that downward. Just add just a tad little green in there. Just just a little slight green in there. Just a lot. I'm just doing like slight little strokes. There we go, um, my black. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add that black for shadow here on the outer edges of the bird, my hummingbird. Just like that. And then some, bring it down here. Don't be scared. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and use my little dandy brush and send my blend those colors in. There we go. And then I'm just gonna use a tad bit of that black and then add more depth here on the outer edges of the belly part of the birdie. There and then doing some like little loops like that for the shadow of the bird. Okay, I'm using the uh, Copic Opaque White with built-in fine brush. You can use white gouache if that's what you have. Use what you have in hand. And, um, I'm 
around the little wings, just like that. Now don't be scared to highlight I'm gonna go ahead and add some of that highlight here on my little birdie's little beak and just a little white drop right there okay um then i'm just gonna go ahead and start adding some slight little highlights here like just dotting And then slight little dottings here. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some highlight. And just dotting away. Just like that. <laughs> Sorry if I sound sick, I am sick though. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and add some the little I can't even think right now but this little part of the little feather of the bird See it starts popping out more when you start adding little details here and there. I think it's pretty much fun to do that. I think my favorite part of coloring is adding highlights, adding like little specks that makes it look like glitter and stuff like that. What is your favorite part after you're done coloring and stuff like that? Is it highlighting and just adding more details? Okay. okay, there we go. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean my brush. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use my Copic. And I'm gonna just add more brown here. And let me use my chisel part and just add strokes. Lightly strokes. And I'm lightly going in, adding those hair strokes. Just 
Sorry if I, you guys see my head in there. Okay, so now that I've done that, go ahead and add some of that white and add some, some slight highlights in there. like that all my little birds look different they don't all necessarily have to look the same so I'm adding a little bit more specks here for highlights I want my little hummingbirds to be popping <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and add some more here all my little hummingbirds look different I didn't want them to all look the same so I did apply different techniques but either way um, I'm very satisfied with the outcome of it and hopefully you guys are too and I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial of how I color my little birdies because I definitely did enjoy so I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek of how it looks and here it is hopefully you guys are able to see that uh, until next time bye